Welcome back to our lecture series, Math 1220, Calculus 2 for students at Southern Utah University. As usual, I'm your professor today, Dr. Andrew Misseldine. This lecture represents the first one for lecture 37 in our series. Uh, now this one's gonna be a continuation of lecture 36, which we're talking about series, that is an infinite sum of a sequence. In lecture 36, we talked a lot about geometric series, so we're gonna change pace a little bit. Uh, in this video, we're going to talk about the idea of a telescoping series and what we can do with them. So consider the series, the sum, where k ranges from 1 to infinity, of the sequence 1 over k times k plus 1. Now, when it comes to series, it's very important to see similarities between series and integrals because series, in essence, are just a different type of integral. It's not a continuous integral. It's now a discrete one. But a lot of the techniques that we used when we talked about integrals actually apply to series as well. So for example, if we had the improper integral uh, from one to infinity of x of one over x times x plus one, and we wanted to integrate this thing, our, our, our thought would probably eventually get to the idea that, oh, we should do some type of partial fraction decomposition in order to calculate the antiderivative. It turns out finding the convergence of the series is gonna require the same thing. So if we take the fraction one over k times k plus one, and we wanted to do a partial fraction decomposition, we'd get a over k plus b over k plus one as our template. Clearing the denominators, we get one equals b times, uh, sorry, we'll start with a, the first letter of the alphabet there, a times k plus one, uh, and then add to that b times k. We're gonna pick some cool numbers to annihilate with. For example, if we take k to be zero, that annihilates the bk, uh, leaving only McDonald's as the option. I, that is to say, we get one, uh, one is equal to just a, right? Uh, and then the other option, if we take a or k to be negative one, negative one, that'll annihilate the a, leaving only behind b, in which case we get that negative b equals one, that is b equals negative one. So with that in mind, our partial fractions look like the following, like we saw a moment ago, a is equal to one and b is equal to negative one. I'm actually just gonna put the negative sign here in the middle, like so. And so this gives us our partial fractions. Now, if this was an integral, we would break it up into integrals and continue like that. So we're gonna try a similar thing for this one. Uh, our series, our series where we take the sum from k equals one to infinity of one over k times k plus one. This actually breaks up into two series. We have the series, well, we have the series where k goes from one to infinity of one over k, but then we subtract from that the series, k equals one to infinity of one over k plus one. Now let's look at what happens to this thing as we expand it, we expand it out. So if we look at the first term of this series, we would end up with something like, well, when you plug in k equals one, you're gonna get one minus uh, you're going to get 1 over 1 plus 1. That's a 2. So we'll just simplify that. So you get a 2 right here. And so this is our first term. That is k equals 1 in that situation. So maybe I'll be specific about that. k equals 1. Then if we look at the second term, we're going to end up with 1 half. That is 1 over 2. Uh, and then we're going to subtract from that 1 third, uh, where the 1 third comes from plugging a 2 into this expression. 1 over 2 plus 1, we get a 1 third. This is now our second term, k equals two. And if we do a few more just to get the feel of what's going on here, we're gonna end up with one third minus one fourth. That is our third term right here, k equals three. Our next term would look like one fourth minus one fifth. And then this pattern is gonna continue on and on and on, ad infinitum. So this is our fourth term. Again, there's, there's more and more of these things. Now, an interesting pattern occurs when we look at this series, and this is actually where we get its name. Uh, what's gonna happen, you'll notice that in the first group, you have a negative one half, but in the second group, there's a positive one half. When we add those things together, they're actually gonna cancel each other out. 
when we look at the, the second group and the third group, the second group has a negative one third. The third group has a positive one third. When you add those together, they're gonna cancel, cancel out as well. Looking at the third and fourth group, they both have a negative, or one has a negative one fourth and the other has a positive one fourth. When you add those together, they likewise would cancel out. And although I didn't write it on the screen, um, if we compared the fourth group with the fifth group, both of those will have a one fifth, one is negative, like you see here, the next one would be, a, would be uh, positive, they're gonna cancel each other out. And you see this happening over and over and over again. And so if we were to just consider a partial sum, if we just take Sn to be the partial sum, where we take the sum where k equals one to n, and we take these two sequences, one over k minus one over k plus one, uh, this would end up with the same basic idea. You'd end up with the first term, the one uh, that we see floating around right here. But then eventually this thing would stop with the very last term. If we went to the nth term, we're gonna get this one over n plus one because this pattern again would keep on going, cascading, cascading down until the very last term here wouldn't cancel out if we had this partial sum. And so because this is the partial sum of our series, if we take the limit here as n goes to infinity, this thing will look like one minus one over infinity for which that part is just zero, right? The second piece just goes to zero and we end up with this series adding up to the number one. And so this shows us that the series is in fact convergent because the limit of partial sums exist. Because remember, that's what, that's what a series is. The series itself is the limit of the partial sums. And so if the limit of the partial sums exists, that's what the series is. And so we say the series is convergent when this limit exists. All right, and so we're gonna get that that limit is equal to one. Now this example demonstrates to us the idea of a telescoping series. Uh, that's what it's often called here, a telescoping sum or a telescoping series. And the idea comes from the following metaphor. If we think of like a pirate sailing the high seas and you have a crewman in the crow's nest looking upon the horizon, your typical spyglass looks much like the following type object here, right? Where you have a lens here on the outside and then you have a small little lens right here for which the crewman would look through. Now, when it's completely expanded, you see all these multiple chambers, but then when you're done with the spyglass, you're going to collapse it down, in which case you don't see really any of this anymore. These parts just kind of vanish away and everything just collapses inside of this one chamber. So you still have the lens on the left, you have the lens on the right, but then everything else seems like it vanishes away. That's the, that's, that's the metaphor we're using for this telescoping series right here, that you have, this, you have this first term right here, and then there's gonna be some final term, uh, but then everything else cancels out when you collapse it down. At the moment, this thing looks like the expanded spyglass right here, but then this thing right here looks just like the collapsed spyglass. We just have this first term and this last term. And the nice thing about a telescoping series is that if you look at the partial sums, you're gonna get, get a general form for the partial sums for which we can then very easily take the limit as n goes to infinity. And oftentimes, not always, oftentimes the tail end is gonna vanish, vanish away. Now one has to be very careful with this because the series itself is a limit of the partial sums. But when you look at the original form, it can be very tempted to be like, oh yeah, here you go. It starts off with one, everything else is gonna cancel out, so it's gonna equal one. Um, you would be right in this situation, but sort of somewhat of a misleading uh, perspective. Uh, as, an, as an example to compare, remember, you take the series where k equals one to, well, we'll start at zero, from zero to infinity, and you take negative one to the n. In expanded form, this thing looks like one minus one plus one minus one, plus one, minus one, plus, you know, et cetera, et cetera, right? And so this one can be very tempting to think that, oh, it's a telescoping series, right? The one and negative one cancel, the one and negative one cancel, the one and negative one cancel. This thing should add up to be zero. But we looked at this example before, right? You could take a slightly different perspective and be like, oh, the negative one and one cancel, the negative one and one cancel, the negative one and the one cancel. And so this thing is gonna add up to be one. It clearly can't be both.
And that's because, as we saw before, this series is divergent. But if, if you're not careful with these telescoping series, you can fall into the same type of trap we have right here. So the, the strategy that I will encourage you to employ is come up with a come up with the partial sums. Don't go off towards infinity. That's when things can get kooky. Go to a finite value. If we terminate at the nth step, then everything will, will cancel out except for the one and the last term, the negative one over n plus one. And then with this partial sum formula in hand, then take the limit. And you'll see with that perspective, you won't get the wrong convergence because what happens when you have a divergent telescoping series, you might be come to believe that it's convergent when in all reality it's divergent. So watch out for that.